This is Kevin Van Hensenrick, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. And if you lift the lid of the basket, you die. We do, we're not live. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. This is Destiny O. I have some technical problems tonight, but uh, hopefully things will work out. And uh, that, what would that make you? Ah, oh, that would make me terrible, Troy. Mm-hmm. And I don't have any technical problems tonight. That's very true. That's very true. It's it technical us right now. problems every night. Oh, man. It's oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Technical problems. Nick <laughs> Charles. That'll be his uh, nickname for the night. But, uh, <laughs> Nick Charles, the director of B Documentary 2. And one. And one. But we're here to talk about part two. Well, so, okay. actually, how, how do the two differ? What's the difference between uh, what's covered in part one? It's different than part two and vice versa. Um, well, there's a few different questions in part two. Um, well, going back to the first one, it all started with Lloyd Coffin. Like I've been a huge trauma, trauma fan for years. And, um, do you guys remember Bradley's? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh yes, yeah. Indeed. So like I'm walking around with my mom and my brother and I'm like seven or eight years old and, I came across the Toxic Avenger Part Two, which is like a new release section. I was like, "Mom, can I? Can we? Can I? Can you buy me this new superhero <laughs> movie?" And she looked at it and was like, "Okay," and threw it in the cart. I was like, "Oh my god!" I knew right then I was going to see boobs <laughs> and and murder and and right then and there I was I was a big movie buff, but um. Basically, for B Documentary 1, I just started getting to, into social media, and Return to Newcomb High was coming out, and I pretty much tweeted him about, well, how can I see this? So I'll get, get a hold of your local theater. And of course, Neil, I'm sure you know the Coolidge Corner. Yes. Coolidge Theater. Oh, yeah, Coolidge is awesome. So I got a hold of them, and got a hold of trauma as well and and they contact each other back and forth and regina was uh lloyd's assistant at that time so she basically set everything up for that and after that played i could you know got to hang out with lloyd had a great night and i always had this idea of you know what i i want to interview people that i i kind of look up to and and go from there and i'm going to start with lloyd and you know, I contacted Regina Katz and she was like, Lloyd's all about doing it. And ended up going to New York and interviewing him. And that's how the, that's how the seed was planted pretty much. He's a very accommodating guy. Uh, you know, I've done some, uh, interviews on the podcast and, and video interviews with him. Actually at Coolidge, maybe it was the same one. It was when he, is it the night he got the, the trophy? Um, no, that, I think that oh, I don't know. He he's got a couple awards from there. It was uh, the premiere of Return to Newcomb High. No, oh, okay, so that was uh, two thousand thirteen. It was all right. So that was a previous one. Then later is when he he got like the After Midnight Award. Yeah, that was later. Yeah, he did. I, I think they showed like Toxic Avenger and Tromeo and Juliet or something like that, maybe. And he got the he award. Was, mm-hmm. Yeah, but and then. Uh, so anyway, it was at that one in, a video, in an interview with him up at uh, in New Hampshire for another movie, and uh, he was always very all about. You know, I asked him, you know, do the interviews, and he was all about it, made sure it happened. And uh, you know, it's really cool that someone like uh, like both of us grew up watching, and then you know, you want to make this documentary, and not only is he, yeah, I'll do it, but he's like, you know, really gung ho about it. Oh yeah, he's always about he's always about helping out and that's pretty cool because a lot of people, they, they won't do it. And, and he, he, right. When you ask him, he's just like, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I'll stand right here. I'll do this. I'll do that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and for, for B documentary two, I, I did the introduction of the first one and I thought it was terrible. Like the, the introduction of my own, I thought the movie was decent, but with my introduction, it needed more lighting. I, but whatever, I needed somebody that would be, you know, special. And Lloyd was special. He was, he's the one that started all. And, you know, I contacted him and he was all about doing, you know, the, um, the opening for B documentary too, the introduction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course it totally works. So 
when you went to uh, when you went to New York, what was that like to be at uh, at, at Troma Studios? Um, well, at the time, we just oh god, it was it was a long day, and you know, from being from Boston, going to New York, so it's, it's always a pain in the ass. Um, but we finally got there, and he was talking to he was um, FaceTiming or or doing a podcast with like the, a guy from LA Times and. He had people from Australia that came in and, you know, it was just like, he's always busy. He's always on the go. He's on the go. You know, I'm 37. He's what? 70 something. I don't, I don't want to give an age out that Mm -hmm. he's not. I don't want to offend him, but he's on the go, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, we walk in there, it's like, blah, 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 blah. And then he came right up to us and like kind of treats you like a family member. Like, Oh, you want to do this? And let's take pics and let's do this. And then we, you know, we did the introduction and it's always been super cool with him. Mm-hmm. Does that spoil you at all though? Uh, when one person's so easy to work with and, uh, or was everyone else easy to work with or were some people not as easy? You have to name names. But... No, well, um, everybody was actually very easy to work with. Um, the names that, you know, that, weren't cool aren't in the movie you know everyone else like yeah Yeah, that's fair enough i'm not gonna bash anyone i'm not gonna be like that but i i i I hear some things recently from somebody that was supposed to be involved with my movie and i've worked on his movie Mm -hmm. and i've been i've been i i had four no i'm sorry five people like get a hold of me and, and tell me about moving a poster or manipulating people not wanting to work with them anymore. And that's just so not true. And I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but we can go forward from that. But I'm just saying, like, (laughs) it's just, it's it's just very strange. I'll be honest. I do know what you're talking about, but, uh, you know. You do know what I'm talking about. I know you know. I know you know. Hey, look, and honestly, um, I'm not going to mention any names, but there was one guy that in the local community and we were going to do, he was going to be in my film and went to his house and it just, it backfired. And I, I worked with him and I've been over backwards for him. Mm-hmm. And that was over almost a year ago, this August. And I was over it the next day. We got an altercation, nothing big. We didn't fist fight or anything like that, but it was an altercation, but I was over the next day and it's, over a year, and I, I heard from a few, no, like five other people the other day messaging me about, you know, about moving a poster. And let me tell you, Robert Mukes, who's six or ten, I went to Hartford to interview him, and the convention was bumping. It was loud noise, and he's like, oh, let's go outside the hotel. And we went out there, we, we scouted out, you know, places where we can film. He's like, you want me to grab my House of a Thousand Corpses banner? I'm like, yeah. Oh, sweet. and that fucking banner was, yeah, that banner was bigger than him. He's six <laughs> ten. He had no problem with doing that, but yet my friend, <laughs> a person I worked with, worked at, even filmed at my mother's house, couldn't move an eight by ten. But Robert Meeks had no problem with that. Uh huh. But as the whole manipul- manipulating thing, I don't know what that's all about. I'm assuming that's about me, and it's not. Mm-hmm. And that's he's causing his own problems, and we'll just go on from there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, part of Beat Documentary is a lot of, um, you know, like uh, a lot of the guys are saying, you know, just pick up a camera, uh, make your own movie. Then you have Joe Bob Briggs who's like, you know, actually learn what you're doing and your know, network and everything. So, w- what is your background uh, before making B documentary two, or before making um, B documentary? Yeah, I basically look. I, I went to film school and I, I, I dropped the fuck out real quick. Uh, I was going to pay like, well, my and not me, my parents were going to pay like eighty grand for maybe four years, two years, or whatever. Um. I went to like master class, like with Lloyd Kaufman and other, like you can do that kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and it helps, but I recommend you would go to anybody that is making a movie and be on their set. And it's, it's, it's hands-on. I would do that. 
um, for for John Bloom, Joe Bob Briggs, um, the guy's the coolest guy in the world. I'm sure you met him. Were you, were you there that night? Were you I've guys actually, there? No, I've actually never met him. Yeah, that's one person I'd always like to meet too. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, uh, he's the he's the greatest guy, and and he and Matthew Fisher, he he helped me out with that because oh, and Mark Astasio, I'm saying his last mm-hmm. name right, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It's it's a very uh, Italian, it's a it's a nice last name, but I'm not sure how you say it. <laughs> I just want. I to think it's sure Anastasio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, you know, um, he came and and did his thing, John Bloom, and but thank, uh, r- real quick for people who don't know, uh, that's who uh, the program director at Coolidge, which is a local theater here in, in Brookline, and they show a lot of midnight movies, you know, weird movies. And they had brought Joe Bob in for, uh, uh, I forget the name of the, the program they did, but it was, it was, you know, he was there in person. Just so, so people know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was um, basically, I, and I'm glad he did that. And he just came in and he's just he was just talking about old movies. Pretty much what he did when he was on TNT for Monster Vision. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's good to see him coming back, and he's coming back full force. I mean, look at Shutter; they're they're going to have a whole what twenty four hour marathon. Yeah, pretty soon, actually, in, mm-hmm. in June. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really cool. It's kind of because uh, you know I grew up with Joe Bob on on various shows, and uh, you know before that, it, you know he was he was really helpful in the eighties for a lot of movies like Basket Case to get out there. And uh, like then he kind of disappeared for a while in the public eye, and then to see him cut, you know, come back, uh, you know, that's pretty awesome, you know, especially for a movie uh, buffs like us. Yeah, no, it's it's great to see him back, and and it's so weird how that works because you're right, he 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 disappeared, but you know, like nowadays, like everything's coming back, and it's great to see him back, and it's funny you say basket case too because like you know. They're, they're, everyone's coming back. Everyone that you saw in the eighties, all these horror guys, you know, they're making a comeback and it's mm-hmm. pretty cool to see them do that. Yeah. They, they, they had, they, they should have their recognition in the eighties or ni- early nineties, whatever, but at least they get it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was cool to see, uh, Kevin Van Henten trick in your movie. And, um, I'm a huge fan of basket case. one of my favorites, but, uh, what, what was, the your thought process for him, you know, specifically, because you're at the convention. So I assume you could like, um, you know, interview like, you know, dozens of people. Uh, what was it about Kevin Van Henten? Uh, well, I, well, when I did uh, B documentary one, I went to, but I, I was at a convention, uh, CT Harfest, Connecticut Harfest. And, um, he was, he was actually one of the guests there. And he walked by, and I was just like, oh, my God, Kevin. He's mm-hmm. like, hey. I'm like, hey, I'm Nick Charles, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nice to meet you. And it was cool. We, we you know, we, we talked for a bit. I, I talked to his wife, too. She's pretty cool. And at the end, we, we you know, we kind of, like, clicked a little bit. And when there was talks about maybe doing a B-documentary, too, I wanted him right away. And then I asked him right off the bat you know, would you like to be in it? And I went to New Jersey and, and filmed him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a uh, great guy. I had him on the show. And, uh, what's also, uh, cool is that he does, um, he's a, you know, stone carver. He became a, a stone carver by like, that's what he does for, you know, real work. And, uh, and every summer, I think it's coming up soon. Is well, yeah, he does a free, is, yeah, he does a free seminar in, in the cat skills where you can learn, the ancient art of stone carving with Kevin Van Hentenrig. Yeah. And, and you know what? His wife handed me a pamphlet of that. And you know what? It, t- it took him like 15 years to do one of them. Yeah. Yeah. He's still working on one that's like, you know, partly done, but it's there uh, because I, I, I've been to it a few times. And uh, he's a very talented man. He mm-hmm. is. I mean, like he's a great actor, too. And I, and I wish he'd done more movies. He, he's done quite a bit of movies that I do enjoy. But mm-hmm. I mean that that's his that's his thing. I mean, and good for him. And to be patient like that, I'd fifteen years to do a sculpture. I I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd be like, fuck this. <laughs> After within yeah, a year, I'd be like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, it's weird to think about because then you know. But well, like he says, like 
but that will be here long after we're gone. So it's you know, there's something yeah. about like the timelessness of uh, of, of the stone. Oh, yeah, true. and he's really he's really good at it too. I, I've seen some of his work and and the work that he's still doing because it takes so long. But mm-hmm. you know that's that's pretty that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been I've been working on a Frankenstein monster uh, that I've been carving into a stone uh, uh, with Kevin Van Hendrick's work help uh, for for like four four or five years <laughs> now. So uh, yeah, so I know you how have? long it's yeah yeah. yeah. But you can tell what it is now, anyway. You can see yeah, it. Yeah. Say, hey, I know what that's going to be. <laughs> right. You know, uh, when I say four or five years, it's only a couple days every year. When You know, it is a seminar, so it's not like I've said it for five years. But there is something cool just thinking that it's there. Right. There is something cool just it's there and then you can come back to work on it. And uh, I don't know. There's something weird about that. There's something cool about that. Well, that's cool. And, and he's helping out too, or is it just you guys been talking back and forth about it? Uh, no, I actually went and learned the the, the stone carving from him. Uh, I go to his, no I went to his seminar, yeah, and so he teaches you how to do the with a hammer, you know, and a chisel at first, and then then you work your way up to the power tool. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I've been uh, working on that. I did do a small belial on a on a stone that I brought home and is in my flower bed still, but. Uh, the Frankenstein monster, it's just like the this is the face, and it's on a great big giant stone. Um, so the I, what they do is um, people come there and they'll carve on a great big stone their own their own thing. And then once that whole sto- the whole boulder is full of all carvings, they're going to move them around to different places in uh, in Hunter Mountain for for people to look at. So you know I've got my Frankenstein on part of a a big boulder that has other people's. Uh, uh, carvings all around. It's it's a really cool experience, and it's free too. Oh, that's cool. I, hey, take a pic of that and uh, send send me that later. I want to see that. All right. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them on Facebook. I think all yeah, you cool. have to bring is what, like a mask or something, Neil. Yeah, just bring a mask and and uh, something to protect your eyes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I highly recommend it. It's a great experience. Yeah, that's definitely a pretty cool experience. I mean, that's. Now is that like a like a like a class? You have, it, you took a class, or you just did it with him? Yeah, just with him. It was him, and he had uh, at the time an assistant, and sometimes he has assistants, sometimes he doesn't. And yeah. uh, he, he he teaches you like the basics and explains it. And we actually did a little, almost like a documentary, really, uh, of the whole experience, uh, traveling there, and then him teaching it, and then uh, you know uh, carving and everything. And uh, but he he he's your teacher. Then you can just come for half hour, and he'll talk to you. You can stay there all day, or you can stay there all week. You know, uh, whatever you have the time for. And yeah. I'd say he's a really good teacher because uh, uh, some people are very artistic, you know, and some people have no artistic ability. But he spends equal time with everybody. And uh, like I really, didn't, I never had any experience of this, and you know, he really talked me through it, and, and made me feel like I was doing a good job. So, so oh, that's uh, excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a great guy, and and he and he's always always about helping like people out too, which is cool, you know. So that's that's pretty cool. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, it's a, and and then no one in that area knows that he's been in movies, so they just know him as you know Kevin the the, the stone carver, the you know the local stone carver. They well, have no idea. We got to we got to we got to get those bastards watching basket <laughs> kids. I mean, exactly. we gotta, we, come on. <laughs> He should be known for that first. <laughs> exactly, basket case is amazing. It really is. Uh, ba- there's something about basket case. I think there's something about all those movies uh, from New York of that of that era, and it's like big movies, small movies. They all have that that feel to them. It's like this grittiness to them, and everything looks really you know uh, lived in and. You know, from Chud to the Basket Case, the Taxi Driver, oh, you know, yeah. everything has a, that, that feel to it. It's just real enjoyable to watch, you know, like it, you, you, whether you don't like films and maybe some people might not enjoy it, but I enjoy it because they're real fun to watch. You know, it's 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 horror, but it's also funny at the same time mm-hmm. and you can enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are you saying, Troy? I'm sorry if I interrupted you. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, yeah, the, like the free one is what, like a week long course? Yeah, is I think there's a, goes? yeah, it has been. So, um, 
Uh, there's a Facebook page you guys can check it out and find out what's going on this year. So, so what for uh, uh, Kevin? Yeah. yeah, for Kevin. Yeah, maybe oh, okay. Hunter Mount. Mm-hmm. So uh, you mentioned uh, you know Lloyd Kaufman and uh, and watching uh, the Trump movies as a kid. Uh, so did that? Is that what you got you into like uh, B movies? And uh, from there, like, uh, what did you start to watch? Um, well, when I was younger, I mean, I wanted to be a musician, first of all. I mean, I, I can play the guitar and all that. Um, I was a big fan of Guar, Misfits, and especially Misfits, because, like, I was, big, I was a big horror fan. And they would sing songs about, you know, movies I loved. But, you know, at the time, like, what later on in life, I kind of backed away from music and went towards movies. It's always been like a passion I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I basically, when I was a kid, actually, first of all, before Lloyd, I was a big Bela Lugosi fan. I, I have over a hundred of his films. Nice. Even before, yeah, I'm, I am a huge Lugosi fan. Silent films up until his last one. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on working on something about him down the road, but you know, I gotta, I gotta figure out that because it could be legal stuff and mm-hmm. copyright issues. But, uh, he, yeah, like anyways, Lloyd Kauf, I mean, a uh, Bell Lugosi, I love his work. And, you know, as you get into his work, you get into Edward's work, Edward D. Wood Jr. And then it's like, okay, wow. Like this guy's doing independent movies back in the Mm fifties and he was kind of the first one to do that. And later on it, it it did inspire me along with Lloyd Kaufman, you know, like Lloyd, like he's, he's passionate about filmmaking. Edward, Edward D. Wood Jr. was too. But, um, you know, with Ed Wood, a gravestone would fall down. He'd be like, ah, fuck it. Whatever. Cut (laughs) screen it. Let's go move on to the next scene. You know, Lloyd wouldn't do that, or or any filmmaker wouldn't do that. But some people don't care. But I, I enjoyed that, and it made me kind of feel like, you know what, I might I might be able to do something, and if I can try it, hopefully it'll work. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So it was a, a B documentary, your first uh, movie. Yes, that was that was yeah, that was right off, right off the bat. That's my first film. Everything else came after you know mm-hmm. uh have you worked on like uh features or shorts or are you i've you're, worked you're, on like, a bunch of shorts like the... uh-huh. well uh with with features um right now for me it was b documentary one and two um i worked on a lot with boom Bastic films with matthew fisher uh dave mcdonough uh rick chandler was in there uh you know we had We've done a lot of we've done a lot of shorts for Tony Newton. Uh, he's like a UK independent filmmaker, and mm-hmm. he's he's got a lot out for trauma, grind exploitation. You can buy the uh, Blu-ray right now, one, two, yeah. and three. Yeah, I, I'm aware of those. I, I enjoy those. Uh, you know, a lot of like uh, fake trailers and shorts, and uh, it's weird because there's a lot of people I know for, uh, from the New England area on those, even though he's a guy from England. Yeah, there's quite a bit, and that's pretty cool. You know, I mean, like, this world, it, it seems small, but it's really big. And to have mm-hmm. some people from uh, around our area, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. And a big part of B Doc Mayor 2 is, um, uh, you know, about uh, like Joe br- brings up, you know, networking. And obviously a lot of the guys in New England have done that. So when did you start to, to network with other people who, you know, were into movie making? Uh, well, I mean, it's honestly, I mean, social media is really big nowadays. Um, with like networking with other people, like, like I said, with boom, boombastic films and, and, and social media, I, that, that's all, that's all I've been doing. I mean, social media is pretty big. I mean, you don't have to really pay for any, you don't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you just write, Hey, I'm making a movie. You can do a casting call, or you can do you can. Hey, my movie's premiering here, and and it, it clicks to people, mm-hmm. you know. And and I recommend doing conventions. That 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 helps out a lot. That helped me out with B documentary too. Every 
I started out with seven people with B Documentary One, and now I actually have sixteen for for part two. Uh, seventeen, including Lloyd Coffin, because he did the introduction. But mm-hmm. you know, it makes a difference. You go, out, you got to just go out there and promote. Mm-hmm. Bef- before you started to get in, did you know that like there was a lot of uh, uh, local people making horror movies? No, I I actually didn't. I I, I thought I was the only one. Actually, after the B documentary, I, well, actually, when it was about to come out, um, it's funny because. There was an Elvis impersonator that came every Sunday at a Chinese food restaurant down the street. Mm-hmm. And I'd take my kids there. And I met this lady named Tina, which who actually happens to be with the uh, Elvis impersonator. And she came up to me one day. She's like, oh, you make movies. I know this guy, Matthew Fisher. You know, you should like hit him up one day. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, I will. And I end up doing that, and we're we're actually really good friends. And you know, whenever if there's a short film he's doing, or or whatever he's doing, I'm always a part of it. And now that that also connected with me, also not just from that part, but getting my name out there. Kevin Walter, he's doing a movie called Tower Rats. Lloyd Coffin's in it. I'm going to be doing a, a scene with my girlfriend Angela Tong, and she was a huge part of B Documentary too. She did. She did just about everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. The people that you meet, you go out there, you meet a lot of cool people and you actually become friends. I think independent filmmaking, you know, you kind of become like a family almost, you know, I hook you up, you hook me up. Right. That's pretty much it's, it. That's a great uh, way I, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And when I saw the trailer, um, about the only person I wasn't familiar with, like a lot of my new personally, and then, you know, a lot of the people I just, you know, know for, for movies was, uh, was, uh, Greg Delisio who made a hectic knife. And so I was like, I wonder what that guy's about. So I went and I uh, watched a trailer for hectic knife and I was like, well, that looks awesome. And, uh, I ended up seeing the movie and having him on the show. And he was like, uh, uh, you know, really great guest and the movie's just wild. So, so it was cool that, uh, you know, your, your movie, uh, you know, brought me to, to someone else's work. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny you say that because I, I listened to you guys that night and you did bench me and I appreciate that, by the way. Um, he, he's also doing Tower Rats as well. He's in that. And it, yeah, Greg is a good guy. He's a good guy. You know, he's acting uh, nice. He's doing very well. I think, um, you know, for Troma... You know, you hear about movies come out here and there, but Hectic Knife has been pretty friggin' huge. Yeah, it was. It's a really, it was a really special. It was something that really stuck out to me. I was like, wow, this is, uh, you know, it's very unique. It's very original. It's just, you know, a wild movie. Really well made. Oh. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And and everyone involved with that movie is pretty good. And Greg's a good guy. You know, I I, I we keep in touch here and there. Mm-hmm. So uh, how are people going to be, uh, how can people see B documentary too? When, when is it coming out? All right. So um, we're doing gross fest. That's coming out very soon. I believe it's July 28th in Pennsylvania. Okay. And um, it's going to be screen there and it's going to be, I, I, you could be, able, you're going to be able to buy DVDs there, but the week prior to that, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see, a link where you can buy it. Mm-hmm. The first week of August, it's coming out. Everything, everything's already made. I just, uh, you know, we're just prepping it up right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do have you screened? Did you screen be documentary for an audience? Uh, the first one, yeah. Oh yeah, yep. In fact, um, it was at um, the Horror Realm. The first premiere was at Horror Realm in Pittsburgh in 2016. And, um, yeah, uh, it's Tom Gro- uh, Tim Gross, Tom Gross, all them, everybody from Gross Fest that's involved coming up soon. I, that's how I met all them. And, and going to Gross Fest, it's going to be pretty pretty big. I can't wait for it. I, I'll tell you that. Because Horror Realm was so awesome. I, they had the Return of the Living Dead panel. Um, everybody there was cool. I, that's where I met Tiffany Shepis. I handed her B-Documentary one. She's like, how come I'm not in it? <laughs> like, well, I didn't know you. 
And then, you know, she was coming to New Jersey and I was like, Hey, can I interview you for B2? And she's like down. She was totally down for it. Yeah. That's true. What, what was it like to watch her movie, you know, with an audience? Oh, it's, you know what? For me, it's kind of awkward to be honest. Cause I'm, I'm kind of like paranoid of what they're going to think or if they're mm-hmm. going to walk out. If, if I hear the door shut, I'm like, Oh fuck. <laughs> you know, they, they don't like it, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I do like, I do like speaking in front of a crowd, you know, and, and for B documentary one, when it premiered at horror realm, I, it was cool. You know, like I, we watched it at the end. It was a good amount of people there. And, you know, I'd talk about it and I actually keep in contact with people that liked it or I met at the convention or any conventions I go to, you know, I keep in touch with people if they want to talk or, if somebody wants to be a filmmaker or have questions, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'm, you know, I'm not the master of fucking, I'm not the master filmmaker, mm-hmm. but whatever I can do to help, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always there. Yeah. So, um, I know I don't want to get too far ahead of, uh, of part two, but, uh, any plans to do a part three? Well, I think Lloyd kind of set the stone for that. Did you see the ending, like with the ending credits? Yeah, yes. I like where he, notice- yeah, he, he kept saying, uh, uh, you know, B-movie <laughs> too. Or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, oh my God. <laughs> Before we get to B3, he kept, he, like I, he, I sent the script over. It's not even a script. It's just like questions, you know, and he had to read it. He's like B minus two documentary. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> He's like, why is there a minus sign here? I'm like, it's not a minus sign. <laughs> but it was funny as hell. And we were talking about Trent Haga before that, who's been in like Terra Firmer and and I think it was assistant director for Citizen Toxie. Um, out of nowhere, it's like starring Trent Haga. He's like, oh, wait, wait a minute. He's not in this. <laughs> but he will be in B-Documentary 3. And I'm like, fuck. I guess we're doing a third one. <laughs> and now if he has to be him, in it. Yeah. yeah, if I can get him and if I can go to California, maybe get you James Gunn too. I mean, honestly, yeah. I didn't even want to do a part two. I, I didn't think uh, people, it was an ongoing joke. Like, when you're doing part two, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, you just wait for it. I didn't think there would be a second one and people wanted it. So one day and because of Lynn Laurie, she, she, cause she was supposed to be in the first one. She couldn't do it. Uh, she's very busy and she's like, Oh, you still doing the documentary thing? And it's like, uh, you know, not really. People are talking about part two and she's like, well, if you can make it to New Jersey on Sunday, I'll be here. And that's when I filmed her, Tiffany Chavez, um, Kevin Hendrick and Kevin Forte all in one day. And that's how it started. And Lynn, Lynn Laurie kind of brought it back mm-hmm. and I'm glad she did because I thought I was just going to move on from that. I didn't think, I thought it was just a joke and, and people actually wanted to see it and, and that's how it became. Yeah. A couple times it came up in the documentary that, uh, I mean, it was just from Joe Bob said that, uh, you know, he didn't, uh, not necessarily like the the, the B movie phrase, uh, more uh, use exploitation. Uh, has anyone else ever said that? Uh, see the the uh, you know uh, the phrase B movie and take it as uh, kind of insulting. Yeah, um, Adam Green did. Uh, that's right. Yeah, he he. Um, I but you know what though? Like, all right, B documentary isn't about B movies. Okay, um, I'll just get that straight. Uh, it's a low budget documentary and I came up with the idea of, all right, B movies. It's a low budget documentary. I'll just call it B documentary. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called that. Um, it's not because these people do B documentary. uh, I'm sorry, B movies. Mm -hmm. It's not because they do that. Um, a lot of these guys in part two, you know, they're well, they're doing well right now. They don't do B, they don't do B movies anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but people do, you know, it's, it's, people do get offended by it, but half the people where they start out, that's where they started from is doing a low budget film and they work their way up and then they become 
what they become nowadays. Like, like look at Adam Green, like Halston and and uh, Hatchet. I mean, those are great. Mm-hmm. And he even said he made one his first feature was for four hundred dollars, and that was on film, not digital. I mean, it was like sixty millimeter, and that's unheard of. And he even says it in the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's another really cool guy, Adam Green. He's actually, I think, the sixth guest ever on uh, on Without Your Head back in, when we started. Uh, and uh, to show what time that was, we uh, I used to talk to him on MySpace. Was, uh, right. Oh God! Was... Oh, that's that's years ago. Yeah, no stage right. himself now. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was actually before uh, before Hatchet, the, the first Hatchet came out. But uh, yeah, he's a very cool guy. He is a cool guy, and he's kind of it, when, when we when we went to interview him, he was all worn out because he was doing his uh, Haddonfield. He's in a band Haddonfield too, and he's yeah. promoting that. Uh, he's promoting um, Hatchet Four. Which is called um what what is it called Victor, Victor Crowley Victor Crowley yeah 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 so he was like but you know what he took his time for me for for nothing you know mm-hmm. and yeah. I will I'll be forever grateful to that and it, it was it's nice to see some different takes on things like uh, from Adam Green um you know some of the people were you know were just like you know pick up a camera and make your movie and then some people are like well you gotta you know, pay your dues, start from the ground up and, you know, learn all these trades. And, you know, I like having the different views on things. And also, uh, was an interesting take from him, which I don't think anyone else brought up was that he likes to have a movie. That's not, um, that's more like fun. That's a fun loving movie and not as, uh, you know, dark and, and dreary. And, and, and uh, I was like, you know, that's, uh, that's true. You know, when you watch hatchet, even though it's, a, you know, murder and stuff, there's, there's, uh, it's not a feel bad movie. No, yeah, yeah, no, oh, definitely not. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, and it's funny, like some of these people like aren't really into like much horror. It's you know, like Kevin Van Hendenberg. Mm-hmm. I was talking to him, and he's like, "Oh, I know, you know, I don't really like horror movies." I was like, "What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you serious?" And uh, but you know what? That's that's cool though. You know, he's he's an actor. He'll and he can do whatever he can do whatever. And, and and he's he's a cool guy, and all these people are cool. And they're great actors. They're they're professionals, you know. And they can. It doesn't have to be horror. Like Holliston, look at Adam Green's Holliston. I mean, it's it's funny. It's dark. It's horror. It's everything. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty cool that he got to work with Dave Brocky, and I'm jealous about that. He, James Falzano too. And James Falzano is a great guy. Uh-huh. Um, he's worked with Dave Brocky and I've been a Guar fan for years. I used to go to any time they came to Worcester or, or Lupo's in Rhode Island. I'd or the strand. I'd go there. I'd be <laughs> nice. there. You guys heard they're, of those places, right? Oh yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. They were, they, they were at the, one of the, uh, the rock and shocks I was at. They were like the, oh. they were the head, they were the headline band for the, uh, you know, the, the rock portion of rock and shock. With uh, with with Brocky or the new guy? Um, it was I quite a while ago, so I think it's yeah. yeah so it would have been Brock, yeah. It would have been like 2011 or 2012, I think. Oh yeah, so that's definitely Brocky because I, I think he passed in in 2013. Mm-hmm. Big Brocky fan, big big Guar fan. He and he's he's like he's a great artist, great musician, and he does movies. He's done a lot of movies. And he's just talented all around, and it was sad to hear that he passed, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, like Adam Green said, uh, you know, he's in the more uh, upbeat uh, movies. Uh, Kevin's, I think Kevin does like like the old classic horror movies, and uh, not necessarily like new stuff that's gore. But what, what are some of your favorite movies? Some of my favorite movies? Like, more yeah. like big budget, or... Oh uh, well, just in general, what are some of your favorite horror movies? And you know, it doesn't have to be big budget. What are the stuff that you would say are your favorite movies? Well, I definitely go with Friday the Thirteenth because I was actually born on Friday the Thirteenth, and oh. it's been my lucky number. Anytime, like when I was younger, I played baseball. Every fucking time I'd have on my jersey would be thirteen. Every time, basketball, get my shirt. Oh, look at that! That's thirteen. But yeah, Friday Thirteenth. Um, you know, I'm the a whole big fan fran- the whole of, uh, franchise. Or actually, I would say, all right, 
Well, I'm I'm a big fan of the whole fan tra- the fan franchise, but I'd go more one, four, and I'd probably end it. I'd probably end it at five. Actually, I I I love all and Kane Hart is great. Uh huh. Um, but no, I'm, I'm with you. I do prefer the more like uh, I always say the, the like the uh, the 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 kind of mongoloid Jason as opposed to the. Uh, you know, like zombie Jason. I, I I like the and I like that it's one ongoing story from one to four. You can you have to take kind of a leap of faith from one to two, but you know you can see it yeah. as you know one long story. Oh, exactly. I mean, like in five, I mean it was like or even part five too. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it had a cool. It had like a cool twist to it. That was cool. But like even part six, I, I think they had like two or three people playing Jason, and you can tell by their weight and height. Uh-huh. Have you noticed that? Like, I, I have the box set, and I watched the documentary about it, and it was just like, oh my god, I didn't notice that until I watched the documentary. You but know, if you're hard, you know oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to go back. I, it's been a while since I saw. Oh, not one that long ago. It was uh, when they showed it outside at Coolidge uh, a few years ago. It was the last time I saw Part Six. Oh, I, remember, I didn't. I didn't get. I wanted to go to that. I didn't. I couldn't make it there. But it was a very. It was a very cool experience. They had a guy as Jason walk around the campgrounds, and then you, know, you got a lake right next door, and like a just being <laughs> out, outdoors watching the movie is pretty. It's pretty awesome. Part Six is very. I know a lot of people love it. I enjoy it, but it's it's very. I think it's a very silly movie. But there is something silly, about you know uh, the, bringing it back to life with the pole and everything. And yeah, and it had there. the guy from uh, Welcome Back, Carter. That yeah, was kind of strange yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Horse, Horseshack <laughs> brings Jason back to life. It's yeah. Weird. Hello, Jason. <laughs> but Seven was kind of like maybe I didn't like the whole. You know, like she can use her mind to break open, like break the dock, or you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah, the telepathic. Yeah. I didn't like yeah. that. I didn't. But I, you know, I do I think it's a, with... a cool. I do think it's a cool image of the end of Seven, where Jason's underwater, chained up. I think that's a cool image, but I'm not necessarily cool. a big fan of the movie. Yeah. And you know what? They sell those right now. I some of you, I saw somebody post something about how you could buy like a yeah like a for small, like your aquarium. It looks like, a, it looks like a, yeah, it looks like a bong, but Jason's like in it underwater with the chains on it. I was like, oh my god, that's fucking cool. Yeah, and someone like built one and put it in the bottom of some lake somewhere, and like so you can go yeah. like scuba dive. I was like, that is so awesome. Whoever, <laughs> whoever oh my thought god, of doing did you that. post that? Did you post? Yeah, that? I shared it a while. Yeah. All right. I was that's like, where that's I, like saw. So I saw that. I was like, oh my god, that is so cool. Uh, I'd like to know, like, the, it's too bad, like, you couldn't plant like a camera down there to to uh, record, like, you know, someone just finding it. Like, I, I would like to see someone's reaction who doesn't know it's there and they just happen to like <laughs> scuba dive and see. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, hey, here's me scuba diving with my GoPro and. Ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then eight, eight he, he, you know, he goes to Manhattan. So. <laughs> I it, hey, you know what? I I actually enjoyed that. I I didn't know, even the guy boxing Jason, punching him in the face. Like, that's really? my favorite you, part of it. Oh yeah, that's you're gonna live. Thing, you're, gonna, you're gonna beat up Jason. You're not gonna do. It. Come on. Uh-huh. <laughs> BC Dupree, who uh, that was, uh, we had him on. The guy gets his head cut off, him punched off, and uh, he was all excited because he 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 has the original head, and he like he was bringing it to the convention he was going to at the time, which I did think would be pretty cool to you know get your picture oh, no of way, BC really? and, and his yeah and his severed, his severed head that was punched off. He said it but, was uh, fun the, oh. through the airport and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you explain that? <laughs> Got like a head in the duffel bag. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to a convention. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a pretty. It's a really sweet poster to the. Uh, you know, it's like the classic. I love New York, and then Jason's cutting through it, which is pretty cool. I love the beginning where like those punks are hanging out, blasting music on that big ass radio, and he just comes by and smashes it. Yeah, Jason. He just walks by, and just <laughs> kicks it over, and they're like, "What the fuck." <laughs> Uh, the 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 end I've never understood where he's just like 
He's like, it's toxic waste, and he turns into a child. I've never understood that. And then, yeah, then it's totally just ignored. The, <laughs> and it's just totally terrible. ignored in the second movie and the next movie. It's all right. So, all right. It's, uh, toxic waste is going to turn you back into a child? Yeah. Or how about, you know, part one, he was a child. He drowned as a child. But yet, in part two, he's a he's an adult. Yeah, see, that's why I think you kind of have to take a, <laughs> for, for me, you got to have to take a leap of faith. You kind of think, this is how I've always looked at it. I know other people differ. They say he's like a ghost, but I don't know how you could die as a kid and then be a, a, an adult ghost and then make a lot of exactly. sense. Exactly. And then so he dies I, as, and then he becomes a baby in part eight. But then yeah. in part nine, he comes back from hell and then he's like a little <laughs> like leech or something. I don't know what the fuck he's in that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's but you know what? They're good movies. They're fun movies, and I, I enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always thought it would be fun to do like a campfire retelling of the whole franchise, but you just sit there and you tell it as one long story because it would go from you know the mom to him being suddenly he's an adult, you know, then he's a kid, then he's going to hell, he gets blasted to space, and but you just tell it like it was one long story, like at a campfire. I don't know why I find that amusing, but I think it would be, it would be very funny. No, it is, and it, it's it's only you know it, it's funny because like part four was probably one of my favorites. I like it's how my like Gary, what, yeah, it's it's and Tom Savini he was involved, and that's great, and his his effects are great. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he was he was involved with the first one and the fourth one, uh, but part four I I think the storyline was cool, yeah. and the, the effects are great. And you kind of forget about two and three because it was like, oh shit, like, you know, part four, it, it was well filmed. It, it was well written it, and feel, it was filmed yeah. great. I think it's the best movie of, of them all. Some, you know, other ones have like, are fun and everything, but I think that's the best movie of them. Oh, I agree. And I, I totally there's something about, part, I do like the, the, I know it's kind of uh, taken from, uh, from, uh, no town. I forget the name of the movie now. But the, when he's got the sack on his head, uh, I don't know something about that's that. Part two. I, yeah, I do think that's uh, the Was town that said it. That yeah, it, sundown. Yeah, the town. Yeah, it's very yeah. similar to that. So I know people have a problem with that, but. I don't know. I do think was it's it a, was, was it a sack or was it a pillowcase? I think it was a pillowcase, right? For part two. Mm-hmm. I think it's like a burlap sack, but maybe it is a. Uh, <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> so like, hey, I'm just gonna put something over my head and kill people. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's just got the one eye. And, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, the, the so. one little opening for the eyes. It's not, not. There's not two openings for the eyes. Not two yeah. eyes, just one. Yeah. So I guess his <laughs> other eye just doesn't work. I don't know. It probably doesn't work. I mean, he's a corpse. I mean, I'm surprised one works. Uh, yeah. I still. I when I watch the movie from one to four, I well from one he's. Really, the not he's just dead, so he's not really there. Uh, but I think from two to four, he really is alive because he gets hurt. And you, uh, well, that's I don't thing. Part, that, that's part, part one, part one, his mother was killing everyone. He wasn't even in. He wasn't even in it until the end. Right, right. So and the way it, I've always it, looked at it is the end is a dream. She just dreams that he he jumps out of lake. So the, the real Jason died like they well they the legend is he died but he didn't die he's living out in the woods and watching his mom uh, and then he grows up and then when she dies and he, he builds a shrine for her and then then he walks two miles to wherever the other woman lives and <laughs> and brings I his mom's realize, head with him yeah. yeah oh all right yeah it's so it's so funny that you bring this up because it's like it's like what is going on with the story here? The mother's <laughs> killing everyone. He's an adult in the second one, but yet he died as a kid. He had a pillowcase with one eye open, and now he has... But part three, when he gets the mask, that's pretty cool. You know, it's 3D. Yeah. <laughs> but after that, like... <laughs> do you remember that? Like, do you remember that when he when he got the hockey mask and he, he yeah. shot the arrow into the... Oh, yeah. yeah. That one had some of the goofiest 3D effects in it, too. Like, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I, I love did. Those. It really did. <laughs> yeah. I, li- <laughs> I like those 80s 3D movies where they just stick everything at, at the camera. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Through- I always thought it'd be if you- 3D, yeah. like now, it would be crazy. 
<laughs> be, be ducking under the thing. It'd be awesome. It'd be no, awesome yeah. right now. Remember, remember Jaws 3D when they had that? They, they, that was dumb. You know, like oh my god. <laughs> it, oh yeah. It, Look at the Jaws, shark they should have closer. stopped at one. That's the, <laughs> they should exact. Yes, they should have. I always thought but it'd be fun to do like a, an independent horror movie where you shoot it like someone would shoot like an eighties movie that would be in 3d. So people are sticking things at the camera for really no reason, but it's the movie's not in 3d. It, it just, it's like you shot it. Like, you oh, were that'd be it. tremendous. Yeah. I'd love that. Yeah, I would well, find a humorous. And I'm sure like a certain, <laughs> certain people would and other people just wouldn't understand. But. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. And Hey, maybe, you know what? I'm announcing it today. B documentary 3d. <laughs> there you go. It's in <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with it, but it's going to be in 3D. Just start poking the poking the microphone at the camera. And... Yeah, <laughs> stick a pen at the camera, and then don't do it in 3D at all. I love that. Idea. There you go. I'll, I'm just going to trick people. They're going to be like, "Oh my god, it's in 3D," and they're going to wear the fucking special glasses. You know, they'll come yeah, in and be like, "They won't know any better." <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would be the first time a documentary is in 3D if you be breaking new ground. Oh shit! You know what? Maybe I should just fucking do it then. I mean, maybe I'll, I like that. I like this. We got mm-hmm. something here. We got something here. Tre- Trendsetter. Yep. I dig it too. <laughs> the documentary 3D. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. yeah. There should be a rule that all, all third movies are in 3D. That's how it used to be. Well, that's a, that's what it was in the eighties. You know, everything part three was in 3D. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Although I, I loved um, what was it? Piranha Three? I thought it was great. It was the three. That. Yeah, and that one was in 3D. Oh, what the remake? Yeah. Well, it, was Pir- it a it was remake? Like Piranha Double D, right, or something yeah. like that? Or okay. Well, was that the yeah. second of the? Yeah, it was the second. second of the remake. But it's- yeah, but it was still in 3D though. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the first one was in 3D. The, the 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 new remake was the first was in 3D. It was That's like true. kind of the first the first of the uh, of like the new 3D. Yeah, that was the first one that really blew my mind when you'd get the Blues Brothers uh, 3D glasses and stuff. You know, instead of the old yeah. red and and blue things. Yeah. Yeah, the glasses yeah, that was really were fun. Mm-hmm. That one was fun. I'm not revit. Well, actually, I did try to watch it once, not in 3D, and it, it looks very terrible, not in 3D. But I remember at the time at the theater, like, uh, really enjoying myself watching the movie in 3D. Oh yeah, the, the Piranha remake. Oh, yeah. just you, like... know what, you know what pissed me off was Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I think it's part six. I bought the box set and came with 3D glasses, and I'm wearing it the whole time, and I'm like, oh, I don't see anything vision. 3D. <laughs> I don't see anything 3D, and it. I I had to put the glasses on at the last five minutes of the fucking movie, and I was pissed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <yep. laughs> That's. I remember seeing that at the theater, and they give you the glasses, and it was. They didn't call 3D; they called the Freddy Vision, and like it, there was, <laughs> they would tell you, you know, when you had to put on your your, your Freddy Vision. <laughs> what is well, it? Well, I bought like the box, and they just tell me wouldn't something? put it on. Yeah. yeah, it was the last. It was the ending of the scene when his head blew off or something. I don't know, but. <laughs> Nobody fucking told me. I, I put them on right away, and I'm like, "All right, this isn't 3D." <laughs> yeah, my 3D is broken here. Come on. Yeah, something's wrong. Maybe it's my vision. <laughs> yeah, you just uh, you were, your Freddy vision wasn't working. Yeah, I could have been that's, high too. Who knows? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> that's a that, <laughs> my that's my Freddy a really vision. Movie, so, yeah. <laughs> so, well, actually, what other movies are your favorites? We we, we got on a tangent here after the uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, whatever. Wow. What are the movies? Um, all right. So I was, I was a big fan of Ed Wood with Tim Burton. Yeah, that's that, awesome. Um, that was yeah, a I good one. Movie too. Uh, going back when I was younger, I mean, like Goonies and Star Wars were the shit. I mean, that was that they, they didn't inspire me to be a filmmaker, but those movies, like just I just get an album. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't. I, I, my parents would be pissed. They'd be like, "Hey, what do you want to watch?" And I'd be like, "Let's watch Star Wars," and they're like. No, again, <laughs> and it's like two hours long, and they'd be pissed. But they put it on for me, and I would just sit there and be happy. Mm-hmm. Indiana Jones too. That was another one. Yeah, that's a great movie. That's twin, like other, other uh, that. you know, um, 
well, there's there's still there's some good ones here in, in like Monday, but for the most part, a lot of like the big um, blockbuster movies are, are like very dumb, like you know my modern day. There's the exceptions, but like uh, I think when you're growing up, like seventies and eighties, a lot of the blockbusters were still good movies. You know, like uh, the Star Wars movies and Jaws and uh, and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark movies. You know, they 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 didn't have to be stupid. They could still they could be big budget and action and fun, but still be a good movie. Oh yeah, and, and they said Temple of Doom was the worst one, and I actually thought it was it wasn't that bad. I, I didn't think it was like the worst movie ever made. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's Crystal just... Skull anyway. Yeah, that's that was. Oh, that's the worst one. one. Yeah. That's the fucking worst one. I mean, they had fucking aliens for Christ's sake. <laughs> so where the hell did that come from? Yeah, that one disappointed me so much. Yeah, it was, that was not good times. Oh, they're making a new one too, from what I hear. Yeah, yeah. I'd be excited. Okay. I'd be. Uh, you know, I. I'm always looking forward to when, when things like that come out. That sometimes they disappoint you, but. Uh... Oh, I'll go see it. I'll still yeah. see it. But I, I think they're going to back away from the aliens this time around. <laughs> Good. I think there was a yeah. backlash with the last one. <laughs> yeah, there, even without the aliens, I don't think there was much save in that one. No, yeah, right I from just didn't get the the whole thing was just kind of like shit. I, I, I think they rushed it. I think they were like, all right, to make new Star Wars, let's do an Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, we'll just crank yeah. these, these things out. Yeah. I didn't. I, they didn't think it out correctly. Yeah, yeah. Then they were there. You know. Then he has a son, and like I think the idea was that, you know, they would uh, they would go forward with the sequels after that with Indy with Indy's son instead of him, and it's just uh, yeah. Well, they 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 did that with the Last Crusade, and um, he ended up passing away. But and then I think they kind of changed the whole storyline after that. What's his name? River Phoenix. That's it. Right, right, yeah. He he OD'd, I, I and um, I think I think there I think they planned on him actually playing after mm-hmm. um, that series, you know, that whole the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's an actor that it might have worked with, you know, if if he didn't pass away, like. Uh, yeah, but, he's perfect for it. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, that's a, that's a shame though. That was a very talented guy. No, he definitely was. I mean, like Stand by Me or shit. I mean, what else has he done? He's done a lot. Mm-hmm. Everyone Stand by Me was a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I you know I thought Corey Feldman was a great actor in Stand by Me too. It's funny you mention him. Me and uh, Matthew Fisher tried getting him in for uh, B documentary too. Really. Yeah, he never got back to us. He was, he was coming around uh, Massachusetts for that music fest. Ron Jeremy was going to be there, and we tried getting him too because he's been in all Lloyd's films, and they yeah. just never got back to us. Huh. Well, and now Corey yeah, Feldman, uh, people uh, are trying to kill him, is what he's saying, I guess. I don't uh, know what he's tweet, tweeting. Yeah, whatever happened to that when he said he got stabbed, and then like they couldn't find any puncture wounds or anything? Um, I read something they there was uh, like a tiny dot, like it looked like a syringe went through his leg. Um, his security guard fought the guy off and he were just jumping in the car and stabbed him. And that's what, that's what I read. Yeah. And they're actually coming out. And I think, I believe the police apologized for it because they, they were doing interviews and they were like, no, that didn't happen. And, and I actually really did. Cause it's, it's like he, 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 when anywhere he goes, he has security. I know he's not the richest guy in the world or big, big and famous, but he does have security. I remember he was knows? at a he was at a convention. I think it was a bazaar. It was an Atlantic City convention, and um, they did a panel for um, for the Lost Boys. And uh, he he wouldn't t- he only would talk a character, and if you call them whatever Frog Brother, he was. And uh, I remember the guy that was hosting the panel got very mad, but I thought like. Just run with it. Like if you know that that's what he's gonna do, I, I thought it would be pretty easy. You just all right. I'm gonna, you know, I'll just call him by the frog brother and ask some questions. Well, he, he, he didn't like that. He didn't like no. that at all. No, the, 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 he that, that was Corey Feldman's idea, but the guy that was that was like the moderator, he got very mad about it. So we just uh, kind of became a big fail. I just thought it would have been easy just to run with that. That's what he wanted to do. You know. 
Yeah, you know, and with the Lost Boys, it, it kind of went down a weird road. I mean, I, you know, they made all of, what, part two, three, and four, and Corey was in both of them. The two Corys, one, Corey Hayne was supposed to be in one of them, and what, you know, he was so messed up on drugs, they, they put him at the, like, I believe it was at the credits. Mm-hmm. At the end of, 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 I think it was the third or fourth one, maybe it's the fourth one, but I don't remember. But he just stood there with a leather jacket on and the credits were rolling and that was his only part of the film. And I thought that was kind of fucked up because Corey Haim was the lead actor pretty much for the first one. Mm-hmm. And he got treated like shit because <laughs> he was all fucked up on drugs near the end. Mm-hmm. That was right before he passed when that came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned part uh, part four of, uh, you know, uh, Friday 13th, and uh, Corey Feldman's great in that. Oh, yeah, he was great in that. <laughs> Remember that the, the, he's, he, uh, he's making masks. <laughs> he's, he's a genius. <laughs> but it was good, though. I mean, I still loved it. <laughs> And, and yes. remember that guy they met on the side of the road that helped fix his sister's car? They're like, oh, hey, come back to the cottage, cottage and hang out, you know? Like, would, uh, would you really bring a stranger back? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for trouble. Uh, yeah, I then you kind of get what you get at that point. Yeah. 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 And it, aren't, aren't people aware of all these murders by, by, part, by part four? Don't they know? Like, you know, there's been, like, for like the last decade, there's been always people being killed in the area. Yeah, well, like think, for me, like, I'd be oh, like, I probably shouldn't if, pick up a stranger here. Or if I, all right, I'm near, I'm, I'm near Camp Crystal Lake. Should I pick up a stranger that's thumbing? No. Yeah, what could go run. wrong? Run. Come on. Yeah, run. Yeah, I don't even be near Camp Crystal Lake. Just fucking leave. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bring a little kid there. I mean. Oh, it doesn't seem not. very smart. Well, that yeah. big lady with the banana. What is she doing there? <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? I thought they're fun movies, and I love them. They are fun. Uh, yeah. I recently watched um, Jason Goes to Hell because I had the, uh, we had the director on the show, which was a very <laughs> cool interview. And I remember going to the theater to see it. Of uh, my friend Joey at the time when it came out, and uh, we just laughed hysterically from the moment when the guy bites into the black heart for no like reason whatsoever. And I watched it again, yeah. and I had the same. Ex- I just started laughing, and I thought, you know, this this movie really makes no sense. And it's bad shit crazy, but I really did enjoy it. I have to say, I can't say I didn't like the movie. I had fun watching. Yeah, it, it is fun to watch, and and every time I see that scene, and that's the dude that was uh, Rocky <laughs> in Rocky Five. He was a promoter. He was like the yeah. Don King in, in Rocky Five, and that's all I see. <laughs> so right right off the bat, I'm like, wow, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes absolutely no sense why this man would do that, but I just love it. It doesn't, and he's traveling around different bodies, like, <laughs> yeah. hey, whatever. I I, I enjoyed it. And uh, do you ever listen to the commentary for uh, Jason Goes to Hell? I, I haven't, but uh, I do like commentary tracks in general, but I have not listened to that one. The one I watched, it was supposed to be like Jason Goes to Los Angeles or <laughs> California. It was supposed to be like, I think that was Goes to Hell. It was supposed to be Jason Goes to Los Angeles, but they just, something happened and they just went a different direction. But I did enjoy it. Kane Hodder plays the security god. You know, like... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's the only time you really see him. Like, I, I didn't really like how he just... Yeah, he just would just show killed. up in different bodies. Yeah, it's very weird. It's like... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's you know... What was the other... There was a movie that's similar to like that when the... Um, the Bar... Night of the like, Creeps? It's called. And Night of the Creeps. I think there's another one, too. The Bar Wars, maybe. It's very similar. Oh, idea. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, oh, it's almost similar. Yeah, it's just like they puke into their mouth and then they're just possessed after. Oh, was that the alien one, Neil? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one's a good movie. It's, I think it's underrated. I don't think really a lot of people talk about it, but I remember liking it anyway. I haven't revisited yeah, no, it for a while, so I'm not sure. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you revisit movies you really liked as a kid, and sometimes they're just like what you remember, and then sometimes... Sometimes they're better than you thought they were. Then sometimes 
you're like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have watched this yeah, again. Yeah, sometimes rather, you can't go back. Yeah, I'd rather just have the memory I had of it. <laughs> we haven't even touched the, the fact of Jason X yet. I mean, we're talking about space now. Yeah. yeah. Space. I, I kind of think that's always... Uh, when any series like takes their character and just blasts them into space, it's usually uh, just when they, they have they no other ideas. Yeah. They all did it. Look at Leprechaun. That was in space, part four. Yeah. I mean, like everyone did in space. I don't know why. I don't know why. Oh, hey, let's oh, let's do this in space. This would be a great idea. Uh, but it's really not. No, but it's no. still fun though. It's still fun to watch. Leprechaun. Yeah, Leprechaun in space is fun. Yeah, there's there's some cool kill scenes in Jason X, like you know when he freezes the guy's head and smashes it and stuff. But yeah, oh, overall, that was it's, cool. it's, yeah, I kind of like just the idea that they would freeze Jason and then thaw him out in the future. And Jason's and then, never gonna die. <laughs> yeah, you think people would get a little smarter in the future, but I guess not. Yeah. Like, ah, <laughs> seemed like a good idea. Let's let's. <laughs> So with no one's brighter in the future. No, no. no. Brighter. That proves it. Hey, let's thought Jason out. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? Then we'll build yeah. them like a, like armor, too. Because then they yeah. build them like well, a you know metal what? mask. Oh, I know. The metal mask, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, whoever thought it was great to thaw them out, they all deserve to die. <laughs> yep. That's their fault. That's uh, their fault. Uh, yeah, that's another one you get what you deserve at that point in time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But what do you do after you blast your character in space? Like, there's no real follow up after that. No, I know. There's, uh, how much can you go further than space? I mean, I guess time. Oh, you can go back in time, I guess. Mm-hmm. But hey, they're doing remakes now, so what does it matter anymore? Search for that's what that's where you lose everything. I don't like the remakes. I hate the remakes. I hate them. Yeah, there's very few that. Uh... You know, for, like, the franchise. I mean, obviously, like, the thing, the you know, I don't say the original, because it's not the original, but John Carpenter's a Things remake. That's an awesome movie. That was, and, that you know, was the, one of the best movies, I think, out there. And and the the effects, mm-hmm. special effects for that. Oh, yeah, you can't Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And that's all hand hands-on, not, not mm-hmm. fucking, you know, computerized, nothing. Yeah, and it's, you not, get it's really, anymore. like, and it's... Uh, it's the best of, of like uh, everything in the movie because the effects are amazing. So even if you just had that alone, like you know, I'd be geeked out watching you know, these crazy alien effects. Uh, but it's obviously amazing cast and it's well written and it's a good movie. So you know, you really got the best of all aspects. Oh hell yeah! And like I said, I mean, these are hands on. I mean, you had like twenty or more people working with each other and making this work mm-hmm. hands on. Now, you don't get that anymore. It's all just CGI or, or bullshit, bullshit like that. I'd, I'd I'd rather go back to the thing in the 80s. You know, I'd, oh, I'd, I'd rather go back. It comes out better, you know. You appreciate yeah, it more. People amazing. work hard for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's... Uh, I always feel there's some... Even, like, CG that, that's done, like, well, I think there's always... There's like the the weight is missing, and you could tell it's not there, and it just doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't. Yeah, and most it, of it, the time. It, it, yeah, it, most of the time, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like it, if somebody was to re- remake the thing again, I mean, that was a remake of the original, and mm-hmm. which actually came out a lot better than the first one. But if somebody was to remake the thing again, I I I, I don't I don't even think I'd go watch it. Well, they they did. Well, it was more of like a prequel, but it had the CG going in it. What year was that one, Neil? Yeah, it was just a few Which years one? ago. It was, it was, was just it? called yeah. The Thing, yeah. And, and it, it was about it the, the Russians. It had cool things about it, but it just, I don't know. I've never watched it again after the first time. Yeah. No, see, I didn't even know about that. I guess it, that's a good thing. It's worth a watch, but nah, maybe you shouldn't then. <laughs> yeah. What's what's uh, no, really actually, weird I, I, I about yeah? What's really weird about that one? They they started it with with practical effects, and mm. I guess there there are some images out there or a little bit of footage of the practical effects, and like a producer or whatever came on set and for some reason said scrap all the practical effects and just do it CG, which 
Uh, uh, no one really understands why, but then the, that's what you know. And they, I guess they spent a lot of money building all the, you know all these you know weird you know monsters and stuff, and then just had to scrap it all. Oh, that's even no, more depressing. That's not good. Then. Yeah, that's, yeah, that is depressing. That's fucked up. I, I you you go back and watch the the well the one from the eighties, mm-hmm. even with like you know the the thing that comes out and just starts crawling around everywhere. It's like that's all yeah. that's all handmade. Mm-hmm. You know, people took time and, 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 and made something special. Oh, yeah, and it still holds up. You can watch that, like, right now and just be yeah. blown away. Yeah, and I still, and every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, my fucking God, especially when that dog gets tied up. Oh, yeah, you know, that's the just dog? so yeah. gruesome. Mm-hmm. It's gruesome. And, and you know what? That's all done by people, 20 or more people oh, yeah. working together. Not by a fucking computer and making it like, oh, this looks great. Let's just CGI it or do whatever. What I always like, too, about the thing is I think it's like the most alien alien. It's not like I love alien and stuff, but uh, still it's a guy in a suit. But this isn't, you know, like a a bipedal guy in a suit. This is just some totally grotesque and weird and, you know. Totally from Completely another world, foreign, yeah, yeah, which uh, yeah. you know really adds to the to the movie and the horror of the movie. Oh yeah. Oh, those those face huggers are fucking disgusting. Oh yeah, they scare me to death. And then I, Wilfred Brimley's great in in the thing too. <laughs> yes. like, Wilfred fucking Brimley, what the hell's he doing in this? This is awesome. Diabetes, diabetes, <laughs> yeah, diabetes. <laughs> You want and your I, test in medicine, and you you get yeah. Get, hey, like, we'll, we'll take just put him up in the shack. Alien. Yeah, we'll put him <laughs> in the shack on the hill. He'll be he'll be all okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, feeling way better now. Let me out of this place. <laughs> okay, I trust he's you. He's just drink, He's drinking whiskey. He's drinking whiskey. <laughs> and, let me out. Let me out. No, it's one of those there. movies. I just get cold watching that film. Yeah, yeah, there's something yeah. about it. Just like, oh man, I can't watch it in the winter. I just freeze to death. And I have to say, this played the board game recently, and the, and the board game's great. They made a board game for it. Um, I forget the company makes it. And uh, it's got all the real characters in it. And so, like, all, all your players are the different, you know, depending on how many people you have, but you're all really? one of the characters. Yeah, and it's, um, they do a really good job in, in the game of, like, you feel paranoid because, uh, what possibly one or more of the ca- other characters are are you know one of the alien they've been taken over by the alien and so like they could secretly try to like uh sabotage the game like uh and so and like you could find the fire uh the flamethrower then as a group you guys can decide if you want to try to burn up one of the players if you think he's an alien and oh it's it's a really fun <laughs> that's game bad. and then that's yeah weird. and like and like lying is encouraged, so you could kind of lie to try to get other people to think someone's an alien if you're the alien, or uh, it's just it was so, a really so, fun game. So can I play with my kids, or do they have to like cut their? Do they have to make them bleed and like stick a metal <laughs> metal rod into it to see if <laughs> if there's a thing? <laughs> you can do that within the game, which is because last right. week, the I, last well, game we played. <laughs> The last game we played, we're all convinced that uh, that Rita uh, was uh, an alien, and so we all decided to to burn her up with the flame. <laughs> <laughs> and then we found out that she was a human. So then I just thought that was like so so crazy that within this game we like burned a human to death, <laughs> and we were totally wrong. But <laughs> oops, sorry, <laughs> sorry, you're dead. Yep, shit happens. <laughs> 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 You're the thing. <laughs> Oops, yeah, I guess you were. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's. Uh, you have to have like you know a group of at least four people. If you have a group of like especially people who are familiar with the movie, it's a, it's a really fun time. Oh, it definitely. Like- yeah, it's a great movie. I mean, I I I still cringe when I watch it, and that that yeah. that means that that means a lot. I mean, that 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 has an impact. I think. I, I think the movie should be more known than it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a really well-made film, <laughs> and I, I think people out there still haven't seen it. And it sucks. Yeah, it's it's definitely gained you know popularity over the years, but um, but still, I you know I think it's definitely like a just one of the all-time best. I know when it first came out, though, like uh, you know, it didn't do well at the theater, and most of the most of the critics they, like hated it. 
which is really yeah uh, it's odd to think anyone like a critic wouldn't like because it's very well made and everything oh yeah well it, it, you know what it's just like um what is it uh they live you know it's a great oh, fucking yeah. movie and, and everything about it it's awesome that's but another one of my well favorite carpenter flicks me too yeah. that's one of my favorites carpenter's a shit yeah yeah, Roger yeah, and that Piper movie, is so so awesome in that oh, movie. Yeah. Yeah. And that movie's just as topical today as uh, when they first made it. I mean, shit, it's, it's got Roddy Roddy Piper. Come on. Yep, yep, you gotta love it. And that fighting scene that took a half hour. Oh, that's that the balls. Cool that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. South yeah. Park even made fun of it. Remember Timmy and Jimmy? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Timmy, Jimmy! And they're just beating each other up for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Over a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> but yeah, that's another one. Carpenter's great. And uh, yeah, they live in the thing. Uh, uh, now that we're talking, I mean, those two Yeah, movies, now you're thinking I, about I've like all these times. Carpenter flicks then. Yeah, <laughs> so you're they're like, all good. Man, Christine, I can't get enough of that movie either. Uh-huh. Exactly. Well, oh. I mean, we can actually, we could probably talk all fucking night right now. We <laughs> yeah. can talk all night about films. Uh-huh. And of course, it's all about Carpenter mean, movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. So, someone actually the other day did post a thing like, name your top three uh, Carpenter movies. And then I started thinking, like, oh, I love the thing, and they live, and then I'll take a Halloween. And then I just started thinking, like, God, how do I pick three? Yeah. Even know, like the it's, early. It's, tough, it's tough. Yeah, even mm-hmm. like the early no budget ones, like Assault on Precinct 13, so good. Yeah. 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 That was good. And what was that movie with, um, oh, it was with Carpenter and it was about like an eyeball. You know what I'm talking about? Remember mm. like they, like mm. he, he it, it, they put the eyeball on the guy's head and he can only like the dead guy can see through it. Yeah. This is from, oh shit. That's going to bother me. <laughs> Cause I really love his, Masters of a uh, Horror too, the uh, cigarette. Oh group. yeah, yep, that one. Well, really this is good. going way back. This is eighties. I mean, this is still eighties. It was like, uh, it was like, kind of like Tales from the Darkness, but maybe that's it. Actually, no, I don't know. I I, I know that Carpenter did something where this one was a movie. I think that like drove people crazy. Yeah, Wasn't it was that the four cigarette short burns. Stories. Yeah, cigarette burns was. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm not sure which one. Uh, Maybe it's not there's the one I'm pretty sure. where the the devils like what the hell. I, this one's one that I haven't seen. Prince of Darkness. I haven't yeah, seen it. Oh years. yeah, that's that's a great. That's a Alice great fucking Cooper's movie. in that one. Yes, he is. I which just always saw that makes your movie cooler. Really? Yeah, Al- Alice Cooper's awesome. <laughs> He was good friends with Vincent Price. I, like, he's, oh, yeah. he's a die-hard core fucking you know horror fan. See, that was one of the neatest things we just saw. Like the Hollywood vampires playing in in Foxwoods, and um, ah, so jealous. it's him and Johnny Depp and and Joe Perry, and uh, so they were doing like this video montage of like you know all people that they knew and and had died, and um, then they flashed up this one thing and it was. It was Price, Cushing, and Lee. And I just went berserk. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, that is so that is so fucking cool. Those three guys right there. Jesus. I you know, I have books on them. I'm a big fan of them. And those guys are best friends. You oh, know, yeah. they made movies together and they were they were top ten best top yeah. five fucking best actors. You can't beat them. And no, then I just found can't. out something really weird about them and just last week because it was my girlfriend's birthday last week and then she found out that the day after she was born Vincent Price and Christopher Lee were born and the day after that Peter Cushing Peter was Cushing, born. yeah. And I was like, holy shit, how weird is that? Like the three yep. of them like a day apart. Well, different I years. I tell you. But- Dude, it's 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 so fucking freaky. And Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, they were great fucking friends. I've a, I, I bought like my dad bought me a book when I was like a kid, and I just I still have it to this day. And Christopher Lee, he 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 can speak seven different languages. Wow. Or six or seven. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm not even lying. Yeah, he could he could do everything. 
Oh yeah, uh, Peter Cushing. Man. Whatever they ever, any movie they did, they were just they were perfect. You, you couldn't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Especially if Vincent Price is involved. I mean, how could you go wrong? Oh, yeah, it could be the lowest budget budget of movies, and it it still be great. Oh yeah, yep. Even like what was the one? There was one. It was. It was just kind of a fun movie because they got like all of those guys together, and I think um, maybe Peter John Lord? Carradine's in it too. Well, what was the one with? Oh, there was a couple of them. Like the Raven, I think, had most of those people in. Yeah, and Peter Laurie was in it too, right? Yeah, it, yep. And Laurie looked like he looked like he was ninety, and I think he was younger than most of the guys in it. Yeah, he, I think he, he kind of drank thing. himself to, to death <laughs> on that. One. Yeah, he, he kind of looked like a hunchback. He just had the lazy <laughs> eye, and, and yep. he just actually really looked like that. <laughs> yeah. But then you see him in, like, older films, and he was such a dapper little guy. Like, if you see him in, like, um, you know, the Maltese Falcon or, or something, um, Casablanca. You know, and he was a neat, yeah. dapper little guy then. Yeah, he was a good actor, and I, I, I liked how he did Did you ever see that movie, M? It's silent. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that movie. Yeah, it's that's Peter Lorre right there. That's a, that's that's one. That's his best film, and I mean he's done great films with Vincent Price and, and all them. He can do anything. He's another guy that can uh, be a crazy actor. He could be a psycho. Oh yeah. He could be the funniest motherfucker ever. <laughs> yep, very true. You know, he could do anything. He's done a lot of the old like um, uh, radio plays too. A lot of the, if. You can you know find those online and stuff, and uh, he's great at those. You can find ones with Vincent Price and stuff. There's a lot of great uh, if you look into a mold, uh, you know, radio plays with uh, horror legends, and it's a lot of you kind know like stuff from like, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was the one Neil that um, you played I on play one him. of the shows? Yeah, and, I play him sometimes on the weekend, and then you put him up on the website. But yeah, uh, there was some um, like the the lighthouse. World? The one with the lighthouse was my favorite. Mm, yeah, I can't remember it's Vincent it Price and and like this. Well, I won't I won't tell you just in case like you listen to it because it's really neat twist. But he's the narrator and uh, he's working in this lighthouse and the ship just gets get keep getting closer and closer and it's it's awesome. It's just fantastic. Huh, really. I'll have to look into that. And this is a, like a voice, like a recording, like of a story, like a, you just listen to or. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they used to play them on the radio back in like the thirties. And oh, that's uh, good. Uh, yeah. They're like, you know, like half hour radio plays basically. Yeah. I'll look into yeah, that. that. Is, there, yeah. is that, can I find that like on YouTube or any, anywhere? Uh, or I have Spotify? some of them. Yeah. I have some of them on the, on the, without your head website. Um, I used to play. Okay. I should start doing that again. I used to play them every Sunday, because uh, 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 you know they're public domain because they're uh, you know from like, like the 30s and stuff. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah, and Price did a lot of that stuff, like because he did the Thin Man, and I don't know how many episodes it went, but it was oh kind of like a spy kind of show, you know, like on the radio. Is that like Nick and Nora Charles? It could be, yeah, yep. It is because I get that all the time. Even Glenn Coburn, he, the director of uh, Blood Suckers from Out of Space, I'm my name's Nick Charles. <laughs> Nick and Nora Charles. They were the private detectives in the '30s and '40s. They did the oh, movie okay. called The Thin Man. Yep, yep. Then that's it. That's exactly. Yeah, that's it. it. So you got to find it because you'll love it. You'll go nuts. When 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 I I was going to like kindergarten and I had these old ladies coming up to me. Oh, Nick Charles, you ever see the thin man? I would be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> That's awesome. That's perfect. Then. <laughs> that is perfect. All right. That's cool. Yeah. That, that, that always gets brought up. I don't know why. All right. Now thin you got to dig it up. You got to find it now. I'm going to find that. Definitely. Yeah. There was, there was a radio, um, station around that would play them late at night and they were great to just listen to you know they'd have like the old recordings from like the 30s and 40s and some of them were just so good yeah, yeah. i was just checking the, the arc no 
Oh, that would be something to back too. Yeah, we yeah I thought about we thought about for years doing our own version of like a Christmas Carol on uh, mm. for Christmas and having you know so, some former guests do like the different voices and stuff. But uh, we've ne- we never uh, went through with it. But that well, would be, be cool. a fun thing. Yeah, and having some you know like creaking door noises and that kind of stuff. To, oh, I thought it'd be the- fun. Or the the wind noises, like when doors open halfway. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but I want to. Uh, we have uh, Billy coming on here in a couple minutes. So, uh, but I want. It's been awesome to have you, Nick. And we want to check out B Documentary Two, which I really enjoyed, and I look forward to uh, you know Thank future you. stuff from you. So, uh, how can people find Nick Charles? Not at your house or anything, but like online. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to give my address because I don't want people like Chandler coming over here and like uh-huh. feeding me up. Uh-huh. Just kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, you can find me on social media, Nick Charles. Go on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. You know, meet. Just find me. You can find me. Type in B documentary, and my my ugly mug will show up. Very cool. And uh, we'll definitely have you yeah. back. We can you, we can talk about future stuff, or we can just talk about horror movies. What's that? I uh, said so we'd love to have you back sometime, and we could talk about you know other projects, oh. or we can just talk about horror movies. Yeah, we can wrap with you about honestly. Anything. Honestly, we just talked about a bunch of movies, and I think <laughs> we could actually talk for the next four hours and have a great time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm totally down. If that's cool, it, it, if you want to do that, I'm I'm down for it. Yeah, definitely. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, we've been thinking about doing guest hosts once in a while, so maybe you can uh, guest host with us. Yeah, I'll and hey, blessed. I'm gonna be at the Coolidge soon too. If you if you want to come by, and we'll, I'll I'll buy you near again. Both of you, we'll chill. All right. All right. Very good. Very, Very good. good. Uh, I'll be in, I'll be in Seacock tomorrow. Uh, What's in Seacock tomorrow? Uh, well, I'll be doing a, a, a pro wrestling convention uh, this weekend. And it's in East oh, sure. Providence, which is very close to Seacock. So I'll be staying in Seacock for uh, for the weekend. What is it? The New Anybody, England it, Fan Fest? Is that yeah, what? New England. New England Fan Fest and Hall of Fame. It's a Saturday. Sat- then the during the day it's a convention, and then at night it's a Hall of Fame where they induct uh, local uh, legends into the uh, into the New England Hall of Fame, New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. So they got anybody like cool there, like Bruce Bar Beefcake or yeah, uh, see, uh, JJ Dillon will be there. Uh, Perry Saturn, Dan the uh, Beast Severin, Dan the Beast Severin, Paul Roma. Dangerous Danny Davis, uh, Howard Finkel, the old ring announcer. He was around forever. Yeah, the oh yeah, the guy with the mustache, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he's still alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's good for him. Oh, he's got to be. I. He seemed like he was in his forties when I was like five. <laughs> yep, that was years Mar- ago. Marty Janetti, Tony Atlas. Marty uh, Janetti, no way. Yeah, yeah. Tug boat. The Rockers. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. just Marty, I believe. Not no Shawn Michaels, but Marty other of the other Rockers. Tugboat looked the yeah. same, only his beard was white. Yeah. He looked just about the same. He still looks about like four hundred pounds. He looked huge. He's still a tugboat. Yeah. Then, right? Mm-hmm. Toot, toot. Or uh, no, what else was he though? He was also uh what else he was, was tyf- he? Typhoon. Typhoon, that's it, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he was the shock master when he went to WWE. Yeah, but he probably wants to forget that when he, like, smashed <laughs> through the wall. Lost yeah, and he to give people the shocker. <laughs> 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 All right, well, before we go, I would like to give a shout-out to my daughter, Faith and Charles, and my son, Nico Charles, because, you know, they're they're actually becoming, like, into the film kind of thing where they pick up a camera and edit, especially my daughter. You see a lot of pics of me on, on Facebook promoting like conventions. It's actually my, my daughter Faith took that and she, she edits it and I'm pretty proud of both of them. Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Then they're getting into it and you know, hopefully they uh, pursue it one day. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. It's I appreciate. Yeah. Well, uh, I I'm hope they're pro- listening. I'm a proud there. dad. Oh, they will. Yes, I, well, I, I told them. Be. I I told them. I said yeah, they're sleeping right now. I said you, you'll hear this all week, and don't mind if I swear, but <laughs> they've heard me swear before. Yeah, they'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. 
right, very good. Well, appreciate you coming on. It's been awesome to talk to you. Yeah, thanks again. Yep. All right, hey, thank you guys. I appreciate it. We'll talk more. We, I, if you want me back on? We could talk all night. I don't care. All right, if sounds we, good. It was a good night. Awesome. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, mate. You have a good night. Uh, okay. Hi, this is Kane Hodder, Victor Crowley, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.